Hey folks, Arseni here. A few months ago I wanted to tweak colors in a Godot project, like I usually do in any other engine. Apparently there are no built-in color grading tools, so let's make a custom shader for it, right? What could possibly go wrong? And here we are, two months later, with the most sophisticated Godot shader ever made. There are dozens of sliders now for 10 different features that I will explain in the video. But don't worry, it's kind of fast even on integrated graphics. Follow the instructions on GitHub or here on the screen. All links are available in the video description. Basically, you download a couple of folders from GitHub, place them into your project, create a couple of nodes, and you're good to go. The pixelation is done in the UV frame of the graph. We shrink down the canvas, round up values to fit into the new pixel grid, and scale it back up to the original size. Fairly easy. Don't use it with too detailed graphics, or it will cause flickering. Don't use it for optimization, since it still renders all the pixels underneath. But try it out with posterization effect and low poly, it should look cool. Let's move forward. It's impossible to simulate binocular vision with one camera on a flat screen. The result is either too narrow or too wide. Panini is the trick to get a wide peripheral and a close center at the same time. It gives you a natural distribution of depth and is mostly useful for first-person games. Just use about 85 to 100 degrees vision and boost the center by values from 0.2 to 0.4 to compensate. I'm scaling the center by the radial gradient. The issue is that it's a post effect. It doesn't have pixels to boost, which makes the scaled up center slightly blurry. And I have a solution for that. Just listen further. In the real world, red and blue colors fall into the opposite sides. Usually it's done horribly in games and the most hated feature, no doubt. But with two extra sliders, the effect can be applied to bright areas only and gradually exclude the center. Same as it does with real lenses, mostly noticeable in bright areas or on peripheral areas. For the first time in many years I like how chromatic aberrations look in a game. So I kind of recommend you to try it out. So I take our screen, 8 samples, move them around and mix. The result looks blurry and I control the strengths where mix node. But how about negative values of the mix? Yes, they will add sharpening instead, because they will subtract blurriness. But making the whole image evenly sharp is also ugly, so there is another gradient to apply the effect specifically to the center. It also gives you a natural feel, because your eyes are sharper in the center and blurred out in the peripheral. Bloom is light leaking from overlit areas of the image. It should be enabled in Godot world environment first. And you need a CES, filmic or AGX color spaces, not linear one. Then you can boost these overlit areas or make them slightly red to simulate a filmic look from recent Apple ads. This reddish tint is called halation. There are dozens of sliders to control color the way you would do in a video editing app. But we are in a game engine, so first make proper lighting and materials and only then play around with final colors. Remember that all things can be controlled from code and animated. So you can change colors depending on the scene, on the mood, on the cinematics or whatever. Remember the iconic look of Little Company? I want it and it looks cool with pixelation. The original image has 256 steps for hues, saturation and values. Instead I'm making a gradient with only 10 steps for hues and values. So we have 10 colors and 10 brightness steps to mix them with the original image. If needed, just create different gradients in the constant colors to get more or fewer steps. The most reasonable tweak here is to make 16 colors with 8 lighting steps. But I'm kinda too lazy to keep doing it, since I'm not going to use it right now. Both our own eyes and lenses tend to make the center of the image brighter and corners darker. This is exactly what we do with vignette. Applying a simple gradient so it darkens the corners of the image. It gives even more focus to the center and works well with both realistic and stylized effects that we have. 
Both film and digital cameras have noise. The filmic one is considered aesthetical. So I'm trying to recreate a filmic one properly in just a few steps. A noise texture is styled many times, repositioned every frame and then applied as a filter. It's mostly noticeable on mid-tones and barely visible on any bright areas, exactly as it should be. As usual, values from 0.2 to 0.5 are the most reasonable to use in the game. Gradient color filter may be the one and only tool I encourage you to use for every single game. A color gradient is applied on top of the image by luminosity. Darker areas to the left and brighter ones are on the right. It's like a color filter but on steroids. To simplify it for you, I packed four filter textures into the project. So start with them and try it out. Fortunately, Godot supports such procedural gradient textures, so you don't need an external graphics editor for it. Just make one in Godot and play around with it. There are some known issues and limitations, though. Groups are not supported for visual shaders, so it can be a little confusing. Dozens of sliders are visible all at once. And finally, the graph has scaling issues. It will be fixed later on, and I will rearrange nodes accordingly. Somewhere in 4.4 or 4.5. We'll see about that. The shader is already packed tight, so no more features for a public release. But feel free to report issues, and I will check if they can be fixed. And please tag me on social media if you have nice screenshots and videos with this effect. As always, it was your chill guy Arseni Mirny for Game Union TV. Go make amazing games and see you next time.